over the last 18 months, haven't we? It's different for everybody, but some people have reported living with symptoms like extreme tiredness, shortness of breath, and problems with memory and concentration known as brain fog. Uh, that's after having COVID-19. And according to the NHS, the chances of having long-term symptoms doesn't seem to be linked to how ill you are when you first get the virus. But now a heart specialist in York is claiming that many long COVID patients might actually be living with a condition called POTS, that's postural tachycardia uh, syndrome. Dr. Sanjay Gupta is a consultant cardiologist at York Hospital. He joins me on the show now. Thank you for being on the show. Just tell us what is POTS, Dr. Gupta? Thank you so much for having me. POTS is a poorly recognised condition which uh, afflicts a huge number of people. Uh, the typical scenario is someone between the ages of uh, 14 and 45, and what happens to them is they develop a viral illness of some sort, and they become unwell, and they get bedbound for a week trying to recover, and they never quite recover. So what they will experience after this illness is that they get very dizzy when they stand up, their heart races, they feel tired all the time, they complain of brain fog, they complain of temperature dysregulation, their sleep becomes affected. And in essence, what they really say is that, I feel tired and wired. And because of this, they don't like being upstanding. So they end up becoming more and more limited because they have to sit down. They become more uh, restricted in their lives. They become more socially isolated. And unfortunately, they miss out on a large part of very important years because of this debilitating condition, which to the outsider is invisible. So these people look okay, but they're really struggling from within. And often, unfortunately, because they look okay, they end up being marginalized. They end up being told they're just anxious or they're just a bit feeble. And uh, unfortunately, that compounds the problem because they sit there, they're suffering, and they don't get the help that they need, partly because people see them as looking okay, they're young, they're otherwise looking okay, and partly because there's a lack of understanding of this condition. Is this just another name for long COVID, or is it something different? Well, you know, the first thing to say is that long COVID is very interesting in that it is something that happens after infection with the virus. And POTS is also commonly seen um, after an infection with some kind of viral illness. And the symptoms are incredibly similar. And there are lots of patients that come to me who will say that, look, you know, I have these symptoms after I got COVID. But actually, when I look back, I also had some of these symptoms to a much milder degree even before I got COVID. It's just that after COVID, I got so much worse. So that makes me think that there's certainly a significant overlap between these two conditions. And yeah. we shouldn't just think of this as something which is specific to COVID, but maybe this is an, a post-viral unmasking of some kind of genetic vulnerability, which then really flares up after the virus. And the important thing, the thing that I really want to highlight is that if we start thinking of long COVID as a completely separate condition, in some ways, we may miss out on these people who may have POTS and that has flared up after COVID. And those people could actually get treatment and could get better. Uh, unfortunately, if it is not recognized, then we'll keep waiting for treatments for long COVID, which may be years, you know, in the making. And that's why it's important that people are aware of this condition. Dr. Gupta, just stay there, because I'm going to bring in Francesca Fox who is 20 years old from Newton on Ooze, and she's one of the patients that you've been that you've diagnosed with, with POTS. Uh, welcome to the show, Francesca. Thank you so much for, for being with us. Just tell us your story. Thank you for having me. Um, so I developed numerous uh, viral illnesses over the last, um, like, sort of couple of months um, in 2019, and um, I started to feel just really unwell with all sorts of symptoms similar to what Dr. Gupta was saying, dizziness, nausea, heart palpitations, all sorts of things, shortness of breath. And um, I obviously couldn't, couldn't wrap my head around these things. And I, and I was ill for um, about two months before I um, 
knew what was going on and I was really confused and I went to my GP and they just said um, they didn't know what it was. They did a plethora of tests, all sorts of tests and um, couldn't diagnose me with anything. And then when I was doing research, I found POTS online and found Dr. Gupta, who luckily is very, very close um, in proximity to me. He's in York and I'm in York, so um, I was very, very lucky to get my diagnosis as quickly as I could have um, in just under three months. So, um, But, yeah, so it was just um, all these symptoms that I was experiencing and then um, after my illness and then um, getting a diagnosis. How are you now? Um, so, thankfully, do- thanks, to, thanks to Dr. Gupta, um, I've been able to make um, some sort of a recovery. I still have many, many, many days where I am in bed, and I still have um, a lot of symptoms that I just, you know, experience every day, really. But I'm able, I've been able to get back to university, um, I've been able to uh, do all the things that I want to do, um, so... I, I, and I owe it all to Dr. Gupta and his help with um, with his expertise on POTS. Francesca, how do you manage your symptoms? So um, what the guidelines are really are um, increasing your fluid intake, so about three to four litres a day of water, um, which can help decrease your heart rate. Um, and then salt intake needs to go up, so increase your salt intake which also can decrease your heart rate, and um, uh, compression stockings, which um, obviously send your blood back up to your heart, which is helpful, and um, and then medication. Goodness. Um, Dr. Gupta, I, I, you mentioned that there might be people who don't have um, uh, symptoms that are as extreme as Francesca mm-hmm. there, what, what will they be experiencing? Is, because I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, I've already had COVID and some of those things are ringing alarm bells in my head. <laughs> yes. You know, the the um, the first thing to say is that um, this is a spectrum. So there are people who have very mild symptoms. There are people who are incredibly debilitated and there are people who fluctuate. So they can be really bad for several months and then they can perk up and get on uh, but it is something that's you know the shadow hangs over them all the time so if they become unwell they get really bad now this is not a dangerous condition this is not a condition that is going to threaten anyone's life you know make them die before their time nothing like that this is a very debilitating condition and Unfortunately, you know, the medical profession seems to be concerning themselves mainly with things that are dangerous. If it's not dangerous, it's not worth worrying about. I would disagree. Quality of life is incredibly important. And therefore, if something is sapping away your quality of life, that is important. And you should have treatment and treatment should be geared to trying to get you back to that quality of life that you deserve. Uh, Same with Francesca. I mean, Francesca is an incredibly resilient um, young woman, and that is why she has gotten better. She never stopped looking. She never stopped advocating for herself. Uh, So what I would say is that if you have very minor symptoms and you are getting by, that's okay. But if you have major symptoms and you keep going to your doctor and you say, look, I'm getting heart palpitations, I'm tired all the time, there may not be that awareness to link it all together. Unfortunately, people will just look at little bits of the this very complex condition and never really get around to putting it together. And um, so in those people, we can certainly help them. That's so good to hear. Um, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, uh, thank you so much for being on the show and, and kind of highlighting this as well. Francesca as well, thank you to you for coming on and telling us your story. Uh, Francesca uh, Foxcroft there, 20-year-old from uh, Newton, who's got POTS, diagnosed with POTS, 